All right, welcome to the third book discussion. This is The Most Dangerous Game. Yes. Which is a short story. Yeah. So type in about size 12 font, it takes up about 15 pages. I like how specific you are about the font size. Well, because normally it would be in an actual book. Like they do collections of short stories. Mm. So it would be 30 of those pages, but of like typed pages that normal people think of is 15 pages. Okay. So Mitch doesn't know anything yet about uh, my reading of this book or anything. So well, I mean, you can broaden that. I really don't know anything. Yeah, fair enough. So Mitchell doesn't know anything. <laughs> and this, uh, this story I read four times. <laughs> so I read it to enjoy it, read it again to enjoy it, read it a third time to take notes, and then read it a fourth time to compare my notes and just to enjoy. So that's a 60-page story. story. Well, for me it was. Okay. So it's a 15-page story. And I have five pages of notes. Oh. <laughs> it was a lot more notes than I and was it's expecting all to make. Up. I really appreciate that. Well, I had to this time because there was way too many notes. Yeah. Some of them, some of them are not as fully formed as the note. And when I did longer books, I had to sort of come up with big, broad topics that I then discuss. With a 15 page short story, you can kind of put it all in there. Oh, typing is the only reason why my shows are actually going to come to fruition. Because <laughs> everything I did before was done written. And not a writer. I didn't want to rewrite the whole draft. So now I'm actually typing things out and I'm able to go through it and then remove things without having to rewrite the entire story. It's almost like they invented computers to be repeatable. Like yeah, that. to be, you know, <laughs> useful and shit. Uh, okay, so first thing I want to ask you. So you know the story is called The Most Dangerous Game. Do you know anything else about it? General. The general idea. It's about a guy who's hunted everything and realizes that the greatest challenge is going to be humanity. Okay. So it's, do... it's parodied a hundred times, so you know the right, general concept. Right, that's true, actually. It's I, an archer. When I first heard it, I thought, uh, I thought, oh, the most dangerous game. Like, football, luge, mm. like, what's, what's the most dangerous <laughs> game here? And I guess when, when you think of a hunter and you go, oh, okay, they hunt game, it makes way more sense all of a sudden. It's, I think it's a play on words. It is. It is. Because it's also a dangerous game for to the, be playing. To be, yeah. 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 Well, actually, at yeah. one point in it, the uh, one of the main characters likens the game that they play to being like outdoor chess. So, in oh. some ways, it is kind of like a game. It's like a strategy game. It's got to be ahead of them. Yeah. So uh, I'll I'll just take you through the plot, which will actually probably take us a long time. Yeah. And then uh, and then we'll see if there's anything else that I that I've missed. Sure. So the main character, his name is Rainsford, which I think is super cool. Okay. Because it's a very obscure... All the names are obscure in this, actually. So you got Rainsford... Like Dequan? Uh, there's no it, Dequan. There's no Dequan? No Dequan. I always say Dequan. Is it Dequan? I, Dequan is so much You're funnier. asking the wrong dude. Oh, okay. Uh, you yeah. know any Dequans? I do not know a Dequan. Okay. I know a, a Jaquan. Oh, what? A Dickwand? What? <laughs> I've met a Dickwan before. Really? But, of course. Oh, okay. You know, it uh, it takes one to know one. Oh yes, mm -hmm. it takes Dick one to know. To know Dick one. Dick one. <laughs> so Rainsford has this companion <laughs> named Whitney, which is a guy. Right. It's so uh, Whitney, I guess, is his hunting companion. Uh, so Rainsford and this other guy are these really superfluous big game hunters. They're superfluous, just superfluous, as in unnecessary. The uh... ineffective. Is that what superfluous means? Yeah, superfluous nipple is one that doesn't actually work. Pretty sure. Interesting. And, and that's based on The Simpsons, so that's that's not take that one as okay. So fact. where I once said superfluous, let's say prolific. Oh, so they're as in really um, uh, prolific means like something that uh, spreads out a lot. So they're hunters that have been all over oh. the place. They've hunted all kinds of things. They're they're professional hunters, uh, and so they're on this uh, they're on this boat. And they're heading through, I guess, the Caribbean. So the Caribbean is like these warm waters in this uh, really calm, dark area. And they're traveling along and someone says, uh, oh, by the way, there's an island like off to our left. I think Whitney says to Rainsford, there's an island off to our left. Right. And Rainsford looks out and he can't see shit. And he says, don't see it. So Whitney says, yeah, you like you rainsford who could see a brown moose in the brown forest at 400 yards away still can't see this island four kilometers off and he says i can barely see four feet like you couldn't see anything on this night oh it's foggy it's uh not foggy it's because it's so humid and so dark there's just no light oh, whatsoever shit. and rainsford at one point is actually sitting smoking a pipe 
and he likens it to being so dark outside that he wouldn't have to close his eyes to fall asleep. <laughs> like that's it's just pitch black out there. Yeah, I've been in that. So they're looking off to the side of the boat. They can't see anything. And then Whitney starts talking about how this island is called Ship Trap Island and how all the sailors get really nervous that's around a, that's it. That's a baby name. Exactly. And he says, <laughs> he says, like, even even the Swede captain, who's this like hardened sailing veteran, gets like really spooked around this island. And Rainsford goes, that's bullshit. Like, this is all superstition. It's got to be. And Whitney says, well, I got this, like, sudden dread when we pass the island. And Rainsford's still in the same mood. He's like, you're you're imagining all of this. It's a mirage. Like, all of this is is in your head. Right. And Whitney says, uh, you know what? Maybe we'll, we'll, be, we'll have better luck when we make it to the Amazon. And they talk about how they're going to hunt tigers. Tigers, I think. Uh, and they're, they need to get these, uh, like, tiger hunting guns. I guess they're big game hunters so they you know need appropriate weapons right so they're talking about uh when they get to their next city it's going to be everything will go back to normal you know it won't be as ominous as it is out on the water and then whitney says okay i'm gonna go to bed and rainsford says and i'm gonna chill and smoke my pipe that's just that's what he does so he's uh (laughs) he's just sitting on the deck smoking his pipe and then he hears shots off in the distance like unmistakably gunshots right off in the distance off to the same side that the island was Mm. and he's thinking okay this is weird. This is really weird. Yeah, all this, this is very weird. Well, Ship Trap Island, there's got to be some bait shit going on there. Yeah. So, this is where Ship this... Trap... Someone really needed to work a little harder on that one. This is, the, like, the strange thing about the story. All of a sudden... So, Rainsford, in order to get a better... <laughs> in order to get a better idea of what's going on, he tries to hop up onto the railing of oh. the boat. Yeah, so it, it even says, like, four elevation... <laughs> So I don't know. Like you had to, like you needed that that clarification. Yeah, like well, well. Otherwise, why the <laughs> fuck would you be getting up on? Anyways, so he hops up onto the railing and in the process, I guess, knocks the pipe out of his mouth. And when he lunges to grab it, he falls off the boat. Okay. So yeah, it, this Rainsford guy seems like a bit of I know, a no. He sounds like an idiot. Yeah. It, that's why this part of the book I think is a little weird because he just sort of jumps in the water, right? Like he j- jumps up on the railing and then just splash right into the water. All right. Yeah. All right. So, you know, shit happens, I guess. But he wasn't being very careful, <laughs> considering no one else is on the deck to save him if he falls in. Do, do they mention the time period? Not really, but based off everything I've seen from the book, this is probably in, like, the 80s. Okay. So it's not the smartphone era. I guess this was written sometime in that era, too. So it's, it's yeah, it's probably really? pre-2000. I always, I always imagine the Dangerous Game happened in, like, the 50s some reason to be totally honest it could because there's there's nothing in it that really speaks of high technology most of it's just like they have lights they have they're on a boat you know stuff that they would totally have in the 50s so without without any sort of visual evidence i guess it could be it could be any time really any time that people are on ships i guess it yeah maybe it's intentionally ambiguous because a ship could be anything well, also, it proves that this could happen at any time. Like, this whole story could right. occur in any generation, as long as this Every right... generation has pipes. Every generation has dumbass ship sailors. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> who do not understand how to get... Shipwreck Island. In, uh, <laughs> yeah. That's the part I'm taking from this. So, he follows the pipe off the boat into the water. Uh, it's funny. He let he starts screaming, but then he hits the water, so it cuts off his scream. And by the time it comes up, like, the boat's already way past him right so he tries to chase it down and the next thing you know the boat totally disappears like you can't even see the lights of the boat anymore and it's just gone and so he's now he's actually in the middle of a sea this isn't like a river they're not in the amazon like in this narrow channel like they're at open water so he just says okay well i know the only place i can go is that island right i heard pistol shots so something's got to be there that's terrifying yeah so he turns and he starts swimming in that direction because it's the only place he can go and he's swimming for minutes, so I don't know how long or how far that is. Not that far. In minutes? Yeah, it's true. Like, an average person who's probably not that... Sm- I mean, maybe he's a good swimmer. Maybe that's why he was such an idiot. He's like, whatever, I'm a good swimmer. It's fine. It's true. Maybe he thought he could catch the boat. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's an expert. So he's swimming towards this island, and he hears this like shrill scream sound. And he doesn't know what it is, but then he hears another shot. And that's when he confirms, like, oh, it was a pistol, for mm-hmm. sure. Like, he knows it's another gunshot. It was a pistol shot. And at this point, he probably thought he only had, like, 100 strokes left, which is not very far. No. 100 strokes through water gets you, like, 25 meters. Yeah. 
So he makes it to the island, just somehow barely makes it to the island. And he even said that if it was any more intense, if the water was actually moving that night, he probably would have just been crashed off the rocks and died. But because it was so calm, he was able to actually get up on these jagged rocks at the edge of this island okay. and just passed out in the jungle. The second he got there, it even says like he fell into the deepest sleep of his life. Yeah. He just he just swam for his life and has no idea where he is and That's it's exhausting. dark outside. Yeah, so he just passes out and he doesn't wake up until the afternoon. Oh, shit. So this is, yeah, this is deep. Like, I don't even know how you sleep on like I, shrubs and stuff like all night long. I feel like you'd be woken up as soon as the yeah. sun was out. I think it's probably the ordeal he went through. That's true. It, you don't really understand how uh, fatigued a person can be just by what they're going through as yeah. far as like their mental state. So he wakes up and he just starts to do some basic investigation to figure out where he is. And he finds the area where he's pretty sure the animal got shot. That scream he heard. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a whole bunch of shrubbery that's crushed down and there's like a red stain. And then nearby he finds a twenty two caliber pistol shell. Oh, shell, okay. So this animal, which is obviously a pretty big animal, he could tell from all of its thrashing around, was killed with a twenty two pistol, which is a small weapon for a hunter to be using against like any sort of large game. Yeah. And... Uh, and that's where he finds the thing he was really looking for, which is hunting boot tracks. Because he's thinking, okay, right. well, men means food, yeah. so I'm going to go towards them. Salvation. And just, yeah, just hope for the best. Irony. It is, yeah, it is actually really ironic. Follow the murderer. Follow the... Well, he doesn't realize that he's... Guys, I'm, I imagine this is probably going to go in the direction of they were hunting people. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> you, you could say that. Yeah. And then, so Perhaps he's... Perhaps a game of jungle chess. Perhaps jungle chess <laughs> we shall do jungle chess so he follows these footsteps and gets back to what he believes is a town at first it's so many lights that he sees over the edge of this ridge that he thinks he's arriving at like a city but it's not it's one huge mansion with oh. like towers as if it's a castle it's this massive mansion built on what you know what a bluff is oh yeah it's a empty space surrounded by cover foliage i think something like that and, and I'm, I'm sure it's a oh, generic no, it's description just, it's just, well, uh, a duck bluff i believe is a a spot you can sit where the where ducks can't see you that's a duck blind blind but yeah a bluff i was as i said <laughs> it it didn't sound right i'm like okay that's no that's right so that's like a blind yeah well a bluff i don't know what it means but what it's sitting on essentially a peninsula of cliffs Okay. So on every side of the house, except for the side you approach from, it's just sheer cliffs all the way down to the water. Mm. And this is actually one of the interesting things. The, they always describe the water in all of these stories I'm reading as being alive. Like they say that the water licked its greedy lips, oh. which is yeah, creepy. I know, oh. very creepy. But <laughs> when you start to hear more about Ship Trap Island, it kind of makes sense why they choose to personify the water like that. Yeah. And more specifically, the rocks. The rocks are really important to like the personification of this island. Okay. So he sees this massive mansion and he thinks it's a mirage for obvious reasons. Yeah. And doesn't have a choice. So he thinks, okay, well, let's go. Let's see what's in this mansion. Yeah. He gets there and there's, uh, I think it's like a gargoyle knocker, like a really epic gargoyle yeah. knocker on this huge wooden door. And he lifts it and it's never been lifted before. It's never been moved. Oh, so it's it creaks and like it's like it's this old ass knocker. So nobody's ever nobody nobody goes there and te like no yeah one's... nobody walks up to the house and knocks no. and lets themselves in. That's yeah. just not how it works. So he knocks the door twice and then the door just flies open and there's this giant man and they describe him as a giant many many times. He's this huge Russian guy hmm. and he's got this massive massive beard. Basically, all you can see are his eyes and he's pointing a revolver at rainsford and she's standing there silently so rainsford tries to he's like oh yeah that's his last name his oh. real name his name is sanger rainsford sanger s-a-n-g-e-r rainsford sanger rainsford i'm trying to find like a hidden word in there that like implies who he is or something <laughs> sanger yeah it's a strange one i don't know why he chose like why the artist chose to go with all these strange names because it's easy to be distracted by that a little bit but he only mentions his first name once that's the only time okay every other time it's rainsford 
So he says, like, I'm Sanger Rainsford. I'm from New York. I fell off my boat. I need food. And the guy isn't moving at all. This giant is just standing there. And I think he, he keeps saying stuff. And then the giant pulls the hammer back on the gun. And he keeps trying to explain who he is. And then all of a sudden, the giant moves out of the way and takes a military salute. And when that happens, he sees this guy coming down in the staircase, like one of these massive oh. ballroom staircases. And it's it's a much thinner, regular sized human. He's got like long white hair, but he has like stark black eyebrows and a black mustache. So he's this very strange looking character and he introduces himself as General Zaroff. So he's General Zaroff. I know the names, right? <laughs> it's all these really strange names in this. I'm still trying, I, to, find, still trying like, to find it. Meanings <laughs> in their names. Like the only thing I can think of is like if you had a race with a lot of generals and you're like, and the generals are off. Oh my god, the generals are off. <laughs> well, there's some meaning right there. So the general says, it's a pleasure to inter- It's a pleasure to take um, the renowned hunter Rainsford into my home. Oh shit, he knows who he, he is. He knows who he is. Yeah, so he already recognizes him. And he says, he says, don't mind Ivan, who's the huge massive dude. Right, of course, why he would you says, mind him? <laughs> he says he is unfortunately both deaf and dumb. And that's why he didn't understand anything Rainsford was saying oh. and why he didn't respond to him. And dumb in the original literal sense. In the literal sense of not being able to speak. Right, okay. Yeah. And then he says, he also has the displeasure of being from a race of savages. He says he is that's a... nice co- way to refer to them. Well, that's, it's funny because he says he is a race, he's from a race of savages. He's a Cossack, which is a... It's, I think it's like an offshoot of Russian. It's, like, it's in that area. Like the Cossack people. I know that name. Andrew Cossack? No, I don't think it's a last name. No, because it's a it's a culture of people. No, there's definitely a Cossack. I'm sure there is. Sorry, Andrew. <laughs> Called that, you out. If that's you, I guess. I don't know. So he says, uh, yeah, he's a so- Cossack. And then he smiles and he says, so am I. So oh. he's already implying that he's a savage from the moment he meets Rainsford. That's a very interesting way of, sa- of saying it. Way of putting it, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, so he says... Already this character is very... He's very mercurial. Yeah. What's mercurial? Mercurial just means that you don't keep one form because mercury is, oh. a, is a very mobile type substance. It's like very fluid, but it's not like water. I, 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 every time you say that, I think mercur- mercutio. Oh, really? I always think of there's a scene from Prison Break where uh, Wentworth Miller is talking to John Abruzzi. I know I just totally mixed actor and character names, <laughs> but whatever. And he says, uh, you're a very mercurial man. Oh. And then uh, John Abruzzi says something along the lines of, uh, what does that mean? <laughs> but he says it in a very, uh, I forget that guy's actor's name. What does that mean? Yeah. Very, very Russian way. Maybe he's a Cossack. Oh, shit. Could be. Could be. So he, uh, he says, you know what? Let's not talk about this now. I was about to eat dinner anyways. Why don't you join me? Go get changed and then like come meet me in the dining room and we'll we'll do dinner together. So Ivan leads him up to this bedroom, this ridiculously nice bedroom where if you ever see a bed, a bed that has curtains, like bed posts and curtains hanging from it, you know you're in a rich fucking place. Yes. So they lead him to one of these bedrooms and he says, uh, I think my clothes will fit you. So just try like try my clothes. And when he's trying the clothes on, he can see, like, who tailored them because it's inscribed into the clothing. And wow. it's it's a tailor that only uh, makes clothes for people who are dukes. Dukes are higher in, like, the hierarchy. Oh. So this is also in an era where uh, sort of royalty, I guess. I don't know if duke is a royal name or if it's, like, a nobleman type position. Uh, duke is a title okay usually i think it sounds like a title either way it's in a it's in a time when class is important and it's also in an era where united states exists because rainsford is from the united states new york and he's also got a a pistol that has a hammer that can be pulled back so it's at least after the 40s sometime well they had they had handguns in the first world war that's true so it's probably well, they would have had revolvers in like the late 1800s, so this could be like. Well, actually, Rainsford mentions his time in France during a war, so odds are that's the First World War that he's talking about. Yeah, and I don't know when New York was established. 
Mm, a long time ago. Was New York was like time. one of the first cities established in the States. Yeah. So that gives us a 200 year period ish that this yeah. story must have taken place but in. Pro- I'm guessing it's probably, if he's got Duke clothes, it's probably 80s and back. Probably, yeah. In an era where people really respected class above everything else, yeah. where it was this super important um, distinction between people. So he gets dressed and he goes down to the dining hall. And the dining hall is a table for 40 people. Oh, and wow. only the general is sitting there. And there's like one other plate left for Rainsford. I, I like this guy. Yeah, so he walks <laughs> in. It's got oak panels on the walls. And he sees numerous heads of... I think I have them listed down here somewhere. Oh, it says five types of multiple animals. Well, that doesn't help me. He has uh, a tigers, Cape buffalo. He has um, snow leopards. He has all these different heads, and he has multiples of these heads. And Rainsford even remarks that these are, like, the biggest, most impressive heads he's ever seen. Wow, okay. Of... So this guy's really into it. Yeah, and Rainsford's a hunter. He's, like, a professional hunter. This is what he does for his life. So oh, you can professional imagine... Professional is the word we should use for this one, because he, he's kind of a tool. Yeah, well, he's a professional hunter, not a professional boatsman. <laughs> you know, he's not a sailor. <laughs> So the general starts talking about how, you know, they, we try to keep the amenities on this island. And that's why it's so lavish. Everything is so lavish, like in this guy's house. And, and throughout the story, the general's always like that. He's always dressed in really nice clothes. Like he's got tweed when he goes out hunting. And nice. he's got, yeah, I love tweed? tweed. I love tweed. What's tweed? It's this weird material. It's, uh, you've ever seen like an old man coat that usually have patches on them? Yes. That's tweed. That material that's like, almost as rough as wool but it's almost like cotton too okay yeah that's that's that material it's super warm is that why they use it i don't know actually it, i know it's really rugged but also looks nice so it's kind of a mix like it's not quite mm. uh, a fancy dress jacket but it's also not a rugged work jacket okay i think that's kind of the idea yeah tweed i like the word tweed yeah tweed tweed and the general says that he's read every hunting book written in english french and russian every hunting book every hunting book so that limits us now that brings us back because there would have been there would have only there would have been like a finite amount of, of hunting books, hunting books out there yeah well rainsford even wrote one rainsford wrote a book on hunting snow leopards in tibet oh. and that's what he first starts talking to him about and th- this actually this is the point where rainsford starts to get a little nervous because every time he looks at the general the general is like studying him Oh, sizing no. him up and, and yeah it's just he's observing him in this way that's not uh, a normal looking at somebody he's really intent on all of his features and he's sizing him up Fuck. yeah so it starts to get weird but obviously rainsford just he's getting food so he doesn't give a shit at this point he's just kind of surviving and you know yeah. meeting this strange general dude so he talks about how He's read all these books, and then Rainsford notices the massive Cape Buffalo, which is... Do you know what a Cape Buffalo is? Sounds big. So a Cape, a Cape Buffalo is a, an African animal, and it's almost twice the size of a bull, of okay. a modern-day bull. I think I know. I think it's got... Does it have a like, really wide... Super wide horns that stretch um, very much like a tauren straight out from the sides <laughs> of its head, and then they curl up slightly. Okay. And... Uh, they're probably almost 2,000 pounds, these animals. Right. And so he talks about how he, when he caught it, it fractured his skull when it threw him against a tree. Fuck. Yeah, and it said it laid him up for six months. Oh, that's brutal. Yeah. Well, and that's the most dangerous game, right? Right. Not exactly. But that's the whole point is that you, he's always looking for something that's going to test him. Right. Further and more and, and be, I guess, more aggressive, more cunning, more... Uh, the thing he really wants is he wants an animal that can reason so yeah this is where he starts talking to rainsford and he says yeah cape buffalo is is pretty dangerous but it's not the most dangerous game he says here on my island i hunt the most dangerous game oh this guy yeah and rainsford says oh there's game on this island and he says well yes but i have to stock it it's not here naturally he says i wanted something that would challenge me more so i knew i needed to invent a new animal And Rainsford says, what do you mean invent a new animal? Now, the funny thing is they really, they dance around this idea of uh, what he's hunting. So much so that the point at which Rainsford says, oh, there's game. And then the point at which the general tells him what the game is, is two pages. 
two out of 15 pages it oh. takes yeah because the they're the general doesn't want to like just outright admit it to him he wants to build him up to the idea well this guy likes to play with with his food i guess i guess well the, the thing that's weird for me is that the general always wants more challenge but at no point does he mention you know why not bow hunt if you bow hunt all of a sudden an animal that's easy as hell with a high-powered rifle or hunt something extremely agile like that's the a, thing he's hunted tigers he's hunted panthers he's hunted everything like birds apes that's a good question, actually. Because they, they're they coordinated. Imagine h- trying to hunt a... Baboon pack, colony? A pack. A colony of baboons. With the intention of, like, of killing every single one of them. One by one, like Predator. And I feel like they could totally take you on, baboons. I feel like this guy's a little little off. Yeah, well, he even says at one point... Well, okay, I'll get I guess there. he's a I'll savage, right? <laughs> he's a savage. Those Cossacks. It's just like, I would definitely, like, if I had already hunted everything that was stronger... I would move on to faster. And I'd probably go closer and closer to humanity before I finally said, okay, I guess I'll hunt people. But even then, this dude is a hunter, which I guess makes sense why you'd want to challenge yourself. But there's definitely people in the world that would be really hard to hunt. Wait, people? Yeah. Lots of people. But what I mean is like some dude who just happens upon your island who's also a hunter is not a hugely challenging person. Maybe he's, maybe he's only just started people, but like doesn't. Oh, I don't think so. At the yeah, I know, yeah. yeah. It, it sounds like he's been doing this for a well while. Well established. Like, like soldiers, elite soldiers, or Navy SEALs, like SEALs the, that type of like level of of yeah um, practitioner, I guess. Someone military who, practitioner. Someone who lives for the fight would be way harder to fight because not only would you be hunting them, they would be hunting you back. Well, as if some some dude who just fell off a boat is not going to, like, his instinct is not going to be to trap you. But if you're after some elite soldier from World War One, that guy's first instinct is to get away from you, and the second is He's to gonna lay a trap. Up. He's yeah. going to be harder. So maybe this guy's a little fucked up, like, a lot more than it sounds well, like. Well, he is, because he goes, he starts telling about how he's been hunting his whole life. He killed his first bear when he was 10. His right. He's been hunting his entire life. The only time he didn't hunt was when he had to go to military service because that's expected of noblemen's sons is that they become military oh. men. And that was the only point in his life when he didn't actively hunt. But even then, he would hunt wherever he was. So he's talking about how hunting's his whole life. And so once he started to get bored of hunting, you can't just like you can't just give up his life of hunting because he's getting bored with it. Right. So he even talks about how the weak are put here for the strong to do as they please. He says, I am strong and they're weak, so why should I not enjoy myself? I don't know if that's quite the right reason. Yeah, so I'll I'll even read it. So he's going along and he's saying, I need an animal that can reason. And then Rainsford says, but no animal can reason. And the general says, there is one. My dear fellow, there is one that can. (laughs) And Rainsford says, you're joking. Like, you what you're talking about is murdering people and he says don't be so cavalier about it oh. i figured a young man of your uh of your upbringing would be a lot less romantic about the meaning of human life holy shit yeah and he's, he's actually always belittling rainsford for being too sensitive about murdering people wow and rainsford uses the best line of all time he goes great guns general zaroff <laughs> what you speak of is murder <laughs> i love that line great guns <laughs> How dare you? What did you speak of it, brother? Absolute brother. I, don't be so cavalier. I've heard that in. A, I think that's been parodied because I heard. I've heard that before. I think I might have paraphrased that. I don't know if he actually says that. Oh, so maybe I'm just on the button right now. Could be. I'm making references as we go. Okay. Yeah. Fine. That's fine. I'm, I'm just pulling them out of my ass. Yeah. Uh, this is actually where Ship Trap Island starts to get real creepy. I still don't like that name. Like, if, well, this is why he says. Sometimes the ships are brought to me, and other times I have to sort of tip the scales. And then he brings Rainsford over to the window, and he flicks a switch, and these lights in the water light up, indicating that there's a channel, but there isn't. It just goes right into the rocks. Oh. So, yeah, he just turns on this thing, and people are like, oh, there's a channel, and they just run their ship aground. And then all those sailors have nowhere to go. Oh, fuck. So it literally is Ship Trap Island. It is an island which traps ships. It's still a bad still a name. Shit name. There's yeah. so many names you could have come up with. Yeah. You could have called it like 
I mean, Shipwreck Island is already better. They probably could have called it Death Swamp Island because there is actually yeah. a Death Swamp. Anything but Ship Trap. That's like, don't come here, Island. Like, and why does <laughs> avoid he... at all cost Island? <laughs> exactly. Why does he know about the island and his name, but his friend doesn't know that it's there? I'm not sure what's going on there. That's actually a really good point. Thank you. I noticed that you put an X on that instead of a check mark. Does that mean, <laughs> does that mean you disagree? <laughs> No, I'm just, I'm just annotating like where I am because I wrote five pages of notes, which is it's like half the story worth of notes. That's, three, that's, that's, a, that's a third of the story. Yeah, like it's pretty. Is that twelve point font got there? No, it's, it's probably less than a third of the story, but it's significantly more than I've ever done before. Usually, I do like two yeah. pages of handwritten notes. Uh, this is actually where the general says, "Okay, well, Rainsford, we're gonna hunt." And he says, we're going to hunt tomorrow when you're feeling better. Oh, so he offers Rainsford to be part of the hunt and not be hunted? Yeah, well, that's well. the general keeps saying this one thing. He says maybe four or five times in this book, he never jokes about hunting. So if you hear him say something about hunting, he fucking means it. Whoa. And he doesn't go back on it when he says something about hunting. I'm a big fan of consistent characters. Oh, he's super consistent. He's consistent right into the ground. You know? <laughs> like the ships. Exactly, exactly. So... He says, um, he says, yeah, you know, we're going to go. We'll see my training school tomorrow. I got like 12 dudes down there getting ready for the hunt, training in the basement. Jeez. And he says, uh, it's so funny because there's this one scene where he says, uh, he says, they bring me all kinds. And he starts, and you, it sounds like he's being super racist. He's like, he's like, they bring me the lowest of the low, blacks, Chinese, whites. And I'm like, okay, well, at least he's okay. an equal opportunity <laughs> murderer. <laughs> Mongols um is that is it actually mean from mongolia or is that a you might say mongrels 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 yeah, yeah now that i'm thinking of it uh and he even likens his uh he has hounds he has dogs mm. and uh he likens those dogs to being better than the men oh. he's like one of my hounds is worth 20 men jeez yeah or like 20 of these sailor men so he he really doesn't have a whole lot of uh i think that's why he doesn't hunt people who actually deserve to be hunted because he has this weird thing where he's trying to put off the guilt by pretending that these lives have no worth so if he dehumanizing yeah if he took someone who was this amazing military expert who was also some sort of high level field operative he wouldn't be able to say oh this guy ain't shit you know, he yeah. wouldn't be able to say this is a degenerate man because right. obviously he's not. So he he actually says to Rainsford, uh, this is how it works. I offer them to hunt. And if they refuse, then I give them over to Ivan. And Ivan has a totally different idea of sport oh. than I do. So apparently Ivan used to be um, what's known as a knotter for the Russian czar. And a knotter. A knotter? Yeah, like a, like a knot er like oh. k-n-o-u oh, okay T-E-R. all right yeah um and what that means is it was someone in russia who would actually whip criminals to death holy shit yeah how russian and intense is that yeah <laughs> whip them to death so he says invariably everybody participates because the other option is so much shittier yeah he says the deal is you get food you get um hunting gear and a hunting knife and then I follow you with a small caliber pistol of the shortest possible range. That's his, so it, that's I mean, how it really works. is a game. It like, is a game. He's explaining it to you. He's telling you the rules. He's giving you the other option of not playing. Yeah. So he kind of puts you in a position where your best option is to go with this. Play the game. Exactly. Fuck. Well, it's clearly either... no one's ever won. Well, he even asked. Rainsford says, and if they win? And he says, well, no one's won. Because I'm still here. But one guy got close. And I had to pull the hounds out on him. And that's when he shows Rainsford that he has something like a dozen hounds. And he says, every night at 7 o'clock, they get let loose. So if anyone tries to get in or out of the house in that time, they get ravaged. Which means Rainsford Whoa. showed up just in time. Oh. Because whenever he was showing up, it was probably dinner. and was yeah. probably around 7. Oh, fuck. Yeah. And then he says, uh, okay, like, come with me and uh, we will have a look at my new collection of heads. Oh, no. And Rainsford just says, it's gotta be people heads, Rainsford it? says, I don't feel good. I have to go to bed. <laughs> like, I need to get the fuck out of here. He's not down at all, obviously. Yeah. So the general says, okay, yeah, I get it. Like, your swim probably tired you out. You know, yeah. go to bed. I wouldn't want this to be too easy. And, uh, and then that's when he says, uh, 
he says, okay, rest up and, and in the morning you'll be ready to hunt. And he says, it's too bad you couldn't come with me tonight. It's going to be a good hunt. It's going to be a strong black. Oh. Yeah. And that's actually what he means? That's what he means. Okay. That's what he's talking about. Strapping strong black. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well. Uh, so I think he actually leaves the hunt then. The general goes to hunt that evening. Okay. So... Rainsford is taken back to his room and basically just has to stay there the night and obviously doesn't get any sleep mm -hmm. doesn't really he doesn't even know what to do at this point because he hasn't really been given all the information as to like what he should be preparing for yeah so he doesn't sleep he's like at the window looking out to see all the dogs and uh <laughs> yeah weird this would be a great movie it would be a good movie and then he actually hears pistol shots in the night so he knows something's going on he doesn't know what's going on uh and then that's actually, I, I, I guess he sleeps. He sleeps a little bit because after a while you would just be so tired. Yeah. He woke up at noon after having like swam through the ocean. So he wakes up and the general's coming back at around lunch. And this is where he's dressed in tweeds. He's dressed all in tweeds. <laughs> and uh, he talks about how it was boring. He says, yep, the guy lost his head. He just kind of ran. I found him. And that was it. That was the end of the hunt. It was, it was yeah, he says, my, Jeez. my old issue is coming back boredom i'm getting bored and uh an asshole yeah so it it's it's weird because now rainsford doesn't know what his next move is so he even says like i want to go home like i demand that i leave right now and the general says okay well we can't do that because you know my plan yeah and exactly and where i live um, so, the, yeah, the general, like, seems kind of insulted, and then he says, so does that mean you won't hunt? And he says, no, I'm a hunter, not a murderer. Like, I won't hunt. Right. And he says, okay, well, then the other option is I give you over to Ivan. And that's when Rainsford realizes he doesn't want Rainsford to hunt with him. When he says hunt, he means be the hunted. Because that's what he'll say to people. He'll say, let's go hunt. But what he means is I'm going to hunt you. That's a, that's a bit of a... Yeah. It's not, it's not a very good use of words there. It's true. Well, I, I think that's part of it. He doesn't want to just openly be like, okay, you ready to get hunted? Yeah. You know, he wants it to... I guess he gives him a hunting knife. So, so they are hunting him. It's still an opportunity to hunt back, but I have a feeling most people don't. Most, probably not. Yeah. Yeah, so Rainsford says, he's like, you're kidding. And he says, what did I tell you? I never joke when it comes to hunting. I only misuse terms yeah i only in, yeah i only deliberately mislead people <laughs> fucking asshole <laughs> <laughs> so uh so he says to him okay well if you win we'll place you on the mainland near a town and the only deal is that you can't tell anybody what happened here and rainsford says bullshit that's not happening why would he say that i know why I not know. just be like okay well because at this point rainsford's basically decided either i'm going to kill them or they're going to kill me that's really strange. Well, what other options do you have? Because do you really believe he's going to just drop you off on the mainland near some island? No, probably yeah. not. Exactly. So he goes, yeah, no, not happening. And the general says, okay, well, we can discuss that in three days. Unless. He gives him three days? Well, because that's the deal. So you have to survive three whole days. You have to survive until midnight on the third day, and then you win the game. Oh, so you don't have to kill him. You don't have to kill him. Ooh. Yeah, so it's a survival game for the quarry. It's a hunting game for him. Oh, shit. Yeah. So that's actually kind of where that conversation ends because it's now it's it's time. He says, okay, well, uh, I'm going to go take a nap. I always take a siesta after lunch. Yeah. This guy is yeah, like... Yeah, he's so funny. He, like, I think he could probably be expertly played by Leonardo DiCaprio if he Ooh. hadn't already done the basically the role... In Django? In Django of being this extravagant murderer who plays games and shit but i think i think dicaprio would be perfect i think so this man's supposed to be a little older though that's the thing he's supposed to be this suave mm. slightly older gentleman you know who i think could actually play him really well mm. um uh, the father from the ranch if you've seen that show at all oh he would yeah he would play the character well because he's a silver fox that's what you need yeah yeah exactly or like a liam neeson type maybe i've been looking for the most dangerous game <laughs> something like he's that. in like every truck commercial like it's true actually he has oh, such yeah. a chevy voice yeah 
it's rough and tough like uh, this game hey you gotta get paid where you get paid man yeah man so the general goes for a nap and that's rainsford's time but before he leaves Nappy he says time. he says don't go to the death swamp because the death swamp uh, for obvious reasons oh really <laughs> the, he says the quicksand in the death swamp claimed one of his best hounds and also claimed the life of one of the hunties right so he said basically just don't go there because it's not a good place to be but not really sure why i have do whatever it. you want i've been trying to turn it to an oasis but you know how <laughs> things go i've been trying to pave it into a parking lot and it's just <laughs> yeah so he goes for a nap and rainsford is given a just small handful of things he's given a hunting knife hunting clothes and then a little sack of food which is surprising they never actually talk about him eating which is kind of funny it's actually the one of the biggest parts of survival absolutely and also when you're running from somebody you need that energy and i wonder what kind of food they provided them with probably high protein bread and water or yeah like protein packs or you know it it depends what era this is i guess like dried out meat so rainsford it's actually really interesting it goes so quickly from scene to scene so it'll be reading along and rainsford will just be there with them and then all of a sudden he's off in the middle of nowhere so it says like he was clear-headed and then all of a sudden he was confused as soon as the gate shut behind them yeah because it just all of a sudden sinks in that now this is happening and then he's just he's immediately in it the next sentence he's actually already running and you're like okay well i guess there's no this isn't a story that chooses to go second by second it's just important points Oh. everything else just yeah it's kind of yeah i guess it's a short story they probably wanted to get this yeah you gotta you gotta fit it in however you can so he's given these things he's on the run and he starts to realize like i need to keep my nerve that's the biggest thing like the last guy lost his head and then lost his head yeah so (laughs) i gotta be careful i gotta be on top of my game uh so he he starts running for a while and then he realizes this is useless and the the really interesting metaphor they use is he says, I am I am set within I am set in a picture which is framed by water. And everything that happens within this image must remain within the frame. Okay. Which is a weird metaphor, but what he's saying is that you have this really rigidly defined game area. It's not like there's fences. The okay. fence is an open sea, which means you there's no way you can get out or away. Right. So he says, okay, well, I'll give him a fucking trail to follow. So he starts looping and doing backflips and just trying to find some sort of a way that he can confuse the general. Yeah. And he finally comes to a massive tree and he says, okay, this is a good place to stop. So he he tries to climb the tree without making any notice, any marks or anything, and then just sits himself up in the crotch of the tree, like in the, in a yeah. Y. okay. And sleeps. So he actually, this is the first time he gets sleep, I'm pretty sure. Wow. Because <laughs> he doesn't even really sleep when he's there. Yeah. And then he's woken because a bird just kind of gets startled and goes flying off. You know, you always see that in like... That's actually... Super cliche when you see a jungle movie. That Yeah, and they suddenly wake up to a loud sound. I'm like imagining this entire thing as a screenplay. It's pretty much what it is. It needs to be a movie. It's a very efficient screenplay. Every book that we've done should be a movie. Uh, What have we done Frankenstein, Lord of the Flies, and this. Yeah. Lord of the Flies needs a new... An update. A new movie. Frankenstein needs a good movie uh, yeah like it wasn't it was not very good the one with um radcliffe oh that was a great movie it had nothing to do with the book oh, okay great movie right. though. just we yeah we need we need a book movie we need yeah an adaptation a real adaptation well pro- proper adaptation yeah you're always talking about true sequels we need a true first movie well i was thinking about this the other day a movie like the medium you're working in needs to be the priority so hmm. Like, like, a, like, I think the reason why the Marvel Cinematic Universe works so well is because they treat them like movies, and then they adapt superheroes into them, instead of saying, this is a superhero movie. It's That's a, a good it's point. It's a totally different thing. Like, Yeah, they structure them differently. Especially the last three, like a Winter Soldier, Civil War, th- like those are like movies with characters that yeah. happen to be superheroes. Super characters. Yeah. Yeah, the, it's, uh, it's a little cliche, that idea, you know... It, sleeping in a tree and the the fogginess of his dream is broken by a <laughs> bird which startles him and he sees ruffling in the bush yeah but that's what he sees so the general is plodding along through the same path that he took to get there and this is in the morning so the the light has come up but it's probably still very early morning and the general walks right up to the tree he's in 
and then just stops, pulls out a cigarette, and starts smoking it. Oh, fuck. And then slowly he starts looking up the tree, like, inch by inch, and Rainsford's basically waiting to jump on him, because if he sees him, he knows he has no choice. Yeah. And he's just holding his breath, waiting to just jump down on top of the general. And then the general stops looking up right before he looks at the tree. And then he just turns around and leaves. Oh, shit. Just goes, just goes away. And Rainsford, you know, relaxes, lets out his breath. And then he realizes a couple of really terrifying things. The first is the general can follow his trail at night, no matter how complicated it is. He oh. knows the jungle so well. But also, the general knew he was there pretty obvious because he wouldn't have just left like that oh, so he's saving he's him for him. another day because he didn't want to catch him on the first day this is sanger rainsford from new york you can't just you know gun him down he wants to give he wants a test he wants a trial oh he also wants to show him yeah what it's like you have to outsmart me you're not i'm not you're not gonna lose the trail yeah yeah and this uh he this is he says uh that was when he learned like what true fear was yeah, so he he knows he has to do something. So he sprints down this trail, and maybe like 100, 150 feet later, he finds this big dead tree that's resting on like this sort of tiny little one. So he takes out his knife, and he creates, uh, it's called a Malay man catcher. It's the name of it. It's, a, it's essentially just a, a small tree that's a hair trigger. So it's cut to the point where it's almost cut off. Oh. And as soon as you touch it, it's going to drop that huge tree. Oh, so, so he sets a trap for He him. sets a trap. Oh, Man Trap Island. A Man Trap. There you go. That's a good one, actually. Man Trap Island. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll write to the writer of this if he's still alive. <laughs> so And then he just, he doesn't even really clear the area. He only moves maybe 150 feet and then dives behind a log because he kind of wants to know if this kills the general or not. Right? He wants to know if his trap is effective. Right. So he's lying in wait and he hears the general coming along. So the general's coming and he's doing the same thing where he's looking down, trying to find like broken foliage. And he hits the bow that's the trigger and notices it and immediately jumps back to try not to get crushed by it. Yeah. And he would have otherwise. He would have just been crushed and killed. But instead it just strikes him in the shoulder and injures him. So he's like minorly injured. And he even stops and says... I know you can hear me, Rainsford. And he says, this has been a good show. Yeah. Like, this is what I was like, looking he's happy for. about this show. I'm going to go and get my shoulder fixed up and come back and kill you. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> so he just plods off and Rainsford is now in a new world. He now knows he can attack the general back, but he also knows that the general is waiting for it. And that everything he does encourages the, the general, general more which is why it's really fucked up it's like this guy wants yeah. what he's going for it's he wants like... to be attacked so rainsford actually at this point runs for hours he's like, that's how big this island is he decides like the, the like, endurance is what he's gonna go for now? well he just he realizes he needs to put a lot of distance between him and the general and at this point he's kind of panicking because he's just blown like one of his best tricks yeah right so he he runs for hours before he reaches the death swamp that's how huge this island is. It's not a it's not a little thing. It's not like 200 yards in one direction, a mile in the other direction. This is a massive place. Yeah. So he gets to the death swamp and he actually starts to get his feet stuck in it and he thinks, "I have a clever fucking idea." So he backs up to the point where he's still in the sand, but it's not that mucky quicksand. Mhm. Mm and he digs with his hands a pit that's deep enough to be above his shoulders. Oh, wow. Because he, this is where uh, he talks about the French War. So apparently in France, they had to dig themselves in into trenches yeah. by hand. Oh, boy. So he digs this massive hole above his shoulders in sand with his bare hands, which is, where did he put the soil? That's what I'm just thinking about now. Because that's a lot of soil, and it would be really obvious that there's a hole. Yeah. Funny, I never thought about that until this very moment. But I, like, I work for a company that d drills holes in the ground yeah you put a little tiny hole in the ground and you get a fuckload of soil out of it yeah so you dig a, a shoulder dip shoulder deep pit maybe, you're gonna have a pile maybe he filled it like maybe there was a pile maybe there's a hole next to it well there's also the quicksand so he could have kind of oh, yeah. piled it in that direction so then he sharpens sticks and puts them at the bottom like this is a really classic trap anyone's heard of this type yeah. of trap oh, yeah. it's did uh, i think they call it a, a deadfall in most places or no, a deadfall um, is when you have the massive weight that comes down and hits the animal. Oh. They called it a Burmese tiger trap in this. Uh, uh, fuck. 
Pitfall. Pitfall, that's it. Thank you. There's a game called Pitfall. It's the only reason I know that. <laughs> so he builds this Pitfall, puts a, a mat of leaves and twigs over top of it just to cover it up. And then it's the same thing. He hides maybe 100 feet away because he wants to know if the trap is affected. Yeah. And this is the point where it says Rainsford lived a year in a minute. So that's how tense it is for him because he's... Oh, yeah. Yeah. He just can't wait for this video. Exactly. So, like, every second takes so much longer than you would expect it to. And he actually even jumps out of his hiding space when he hears the sound, but then immediately jumps back into his hiding space because the general is still standing there, but his dog is down. Oh, fuck. Mm Mm-hmm. So the general again says, I know you're listening. I know you can hear me. So... I'm gonna get another dog. (laughs) Yeah, he basically said, let's see how you do against all of the dogs and then plods back along the trail going to get more things oh this fucking guy i know (laughs) so rainsford i think sleeps at this point because it's it's the middle of the night the general's leaving so it'll take him hours uh, presumably to get back to his house so rainsford sleeps and when he wakes he's woken to the sound of hounds like many hounds imagine um the cerberus from hercules yeah you know uh, it's just three dogs barking constantly it's like one noise oh. that's what he hears the baying of like 12 hounds all at once it sounds like this one continuous bark Jeez! and he can tell that they're coming he can feel them getting closer and hear that the noise is getting louder so he climbs a tree and he finds out that the general is coming but ivan is also coming with the dogs in leash so they're waiting to get close to him so that they can then release the hounds and cut them off You know, they don't want the hounds running everywhere. They've got them all in one spot. Yeah. So Rainsford sets one final trap. It's like his last trap he can do. So he bends back a little tiny sapling. And he ties it off with some, uh, I don't know what kind of vine. I think a grapevine. Ties it off with a grapevine and attaches his knife to the end of it. So he's now giving up his hunting knife to set this trap. And then he just runs like hell. Because at this point, what else are you going to do? You've got dogs chasing you. They're going to find you up a tree under a rock yeah. in a bush they're gonna find you so he's just running until he hears the hound stop and he climbs another tree to look back and see what happens because he's thinking yeah i might have taken the general down he missed the general but the knife took ivan just totally out of the equation so i guess one of the hounds i'd like to refuse the game now <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh this has been fun yeah yeah so ivan gets totally taken out by this springy knife i guess one of the dogs must have tripped the wine the wire and then just that's it this tree just comes flying back down the trail and uh buries i mean a hunting knife's got to be big a hunting knife's got to be six to eight inches long right oh yeah so oh, yes i was always imagining it was a little tiny one yeah hunting knife would be huge exactly so ivan is just gone ivan is is basically dead so rainsford now knows it's all on chase the dogs are just gonna come after him now right because he doesn't have a hunting knife he doesn't have anything he's got maybe some food and the food is just going to help the dogs find him faster yeah. right oh yeah so he's bolting and he sees a blue gap between a couple of trees and so he just goes for it and he runs and sprints right through this gap in the trees and just off into the ocean and just just plummets down into the ocean uh, like off a cliff off a cliff just runs and just he doesn't care where he's going he just knows he needs to get out of the forest yeah and then the general comes up to the edge looks out at it stays there for minutes just just trying to see if rainsford surfaces try to see where he goes doesn't see anything doesn't notice anything so he just says okay i guess i guess that's it i'm gonna go home so the general goes home makes himself dinner has some wine reads a book reads uh marcus aurelius which i thought was kind of funny oh yeah yeah yeah, aurelius yeah yeah so he's he's mildly annoyed it says my two things were minor annoyances the first was that ivan was dead and had to replace him and the other was that his quarry got away yeah and but he says the american didn't play the game because i guess in his mind the game is stay in the jungle out of bounds yeah i guess (laughs) so he's thinking you know what yeah he 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 lost the game because he didn't want to play by the rules of the game and the general then just he's not doing anything else so he goes to bed and he walks into his room and he locks the door and then he walks over to the window and he looks out and he says to the hounds, better luck next time, guys. 
because the hounds obviously like want to hunt too what yeah. else are they doing on this tropical desert island there's nothing for them to like hunt down for themselves yeah and then he turns around read me an excerpt i am turns around and he turns the light on and rainsford is there ah. hiding behind a curtain and uh which i think is funny because he locked himself in before that so no. he's now done the exact same thing he did to rainsford he's locked them into a cage and he said all right good job rainsford you won the game and rainsford says yeah but i'm still a beast at bay because <laughs> he's basically saying this game's not over yeah the game ends when one of us dies yeah uh and then he says get ready general so yeah this is the excerpt i'm gonna read so the general says one of us will become dinner for the hounds and the other will sleep in this very excellent bed on guard rainsford and then the last line in the whole story he had never slept in a better bed rainsford decided so is that intentionally ambiguous i think so because rainsford just like it that that could be saying that that's a thought of rainsford that could be before or after he wins that could be either yeah. so it's intentionally vague exactly it's basically an inception uh die it's a cutting short the what's it called yeah it's, it's yeah essentially it's a it's a short story that cut short it's yeah brilliant and, it, and it, it lets you you know it's pretty obvious what happened but it lets you decide how you think it happened i wouldn't say it's obvious actually i think i think that's intentionally vague because it was like they, they didn't say and then rainsford killed him and slept in his bed no like, like they did like he could have wrote and then rainsford had the best sleep he's ever had it's in true. the best bed because that would imply he in fact did but it was that would be the best bed rainsford thought to sleep in yeah to sleep in it's it's like it could be either like i want to do this or i did this it could be both yeah that's awesome i, I love that actually. that's a great way to end because like, i was thinking i had a feeling this was going to end like that where rainsford shows up and he's like all right well uh time to play my game yeah the same way that you didn't give me a choice i mean you I'm gave me a you. choice but yeah yeah now it's no choice now at it's all. your turn but cutting short on the story in that way it's almost like um the way that the second sherlock holmes movie ends where the two of them decide that they're no longer going to be a, 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 a crime fighting duo and watson is writing his memoirs and he writes the end and sherlock comes out of nowhere and puts a question mark at the end of it i love and that the movie just ends on that mo the moment symbolism is so simple it is it's so perfect and like that moment like that's what it feels like it feels like that that the if you made a movie about this that the the general or let's say the general had like two swords in the wall like they always do and Rainsford standing there with two swords with an opportunity to kill him. And he the other throws sword. the sword to him because he's because Rainsford's now in a three day mindset of I need to survive or kill this man. So he's decided I can't just let this guy continue to do this to people until he dies inevitably. I have to end this here. Imagine if the movie ends with on guard and then boom, like it ends with just like ambiguous like the two of them have now decided that both of them want this fight to happen or rather that now rainsford has decided that this is his dangerous game yeah yeah rainsford well like he said he's become a beast he's been turned into an animal by what the general had done and now he's going to act like an animal and i think it would be hard to actually end a movie because in the story it's really easy the general says on guard you know they're gonna fight and then it just says he never slept in a better bed. But in a movie, how would you portray that without displaying anything that would throw off that ending? You'd probably have to end it with the like throwing him the sword. The two of them have sort of like a like the the general has sort of a smirk on his face because it's now this is the first time anyone has ever put it back on him like this ever. Yeah, well the general is probably in some ways happy. And yeah. it even says before when when rainsford says get ready the general bows to him so the general knows this is oh. it this is the most dangerous game i found it i found him the most dangerous game i like this yeah that whole story is cool and the whole thing jammed into 15 pages is that front and back yeah no no it's uh one single-sided it would be just 15 pages if you choose to uh 
if you choose to put it in a Word document, 15 I, pages. Well, I apologize for the bandsaw yeah, in the, the background. Yeah, someone's running a Dremel upstairs. And I'm worried about hammering nails into the wall. It's funny because you wonder, like, is that just some sort of new age vacuum I'm not aware of? No, because <laughs> the, the last time that happened, they were actually doing work on the on the store below us. And that's just like the vibration going up sounds the, um, like it. up the like the girders. Weird. Yeah, but it sounds like it's upstairs. Although it sounded like it was upstairs last time. Yeah. Well, a good opportunity to end the episode, unless you have more uh, episodes. Not an episode. The discussion. No, that's, uh, I think everyone should read the most dangerous game because it's so short. Every time you read it, or every time I read it, because I read it four times, and it. It feels like it's going to be sluggish, especially in the middle when the general takes two pages to tell him mm -hmm. that he's hunting people. But it's like I said, there's no filler. It doesn't bother with saying, and then he did this, and then he did that, and then he did this. It just says what happens, the important parts of what happens. So you go so quickly from Rainsford falling off a boat to Rainsford eating dinner with the general to yeah. Rainsford being hunted and taking on the general's dogs and Ivan and all that. That's cool. It's it's quick but the perfect length. It's long enough that you can really get into it, but short enough that it's not a huge endeavor to read. Wow. I think it's worth it. It's probably the best chance I'll ever have at reading something, because I don't read, so. 15 pages, like, that's not that much. Hasn't been decided what the next one will be, but it might be a short story as well. Okay. We will see. That's exciting. Thank you for joining us. This has been The Most Dangerous Game. Ooh. Well, this wasn't, but we were. No. Sure? Yes. <laughs>